to be excel in track cycling. Usually the sprinters, they are very muscular, big in size, to make sure that you can produce big power and watts on the bike. It's a different story on me. I'm very small. In Malaysia, they have a typical mentality that if you have a small physical size, you cannot excel in sports. You can try to find something in you, in yourself, that you use to cover up that disadvantage. Well, he's looking good at the moment, but they're coming fast, super fast. I always try to use my speed to counter my disadvantage because of my small size and maybe fast on the bike. So that's why they, they gave me the Pocket Rocket Man. My name is Azizu Awang. I come from Malaysia. When I first started cycling in Malaysia, I can say that scene is pretty small and not so much racing. At that time, we have uh, Lito de Langkawi, which is pro cycling tour in Malaysia. When they pass around my hometown at some of the stages, that's one of the, the things that really made me want to be a cyclist. I grew up in a big family. From what my mom told me, I uh, grew up as a very active kid, always jumping around, always doing something. I cannot sit still. And at that young age, I made the decision to go to sports school because I, I told my mom that I really want to do cycling. I want to be national athletes. I want to be a world-class athlete, you know. My mom is really concerned about education and always asked me, come on, do less outdoor activities, you know, less cycling, less sports. Uh, I want you to focus more on study, you know. I tried to prove to my mom that being very active in sports, particularly in cycling, it's not going to interfere with my studies. So I studies and also every evening I'm still going out for training. When I get an offer, I was so excited. I always want to train with John Beasley in Melbourne. And I saw this little guy win three gold medals and a silver, and he didn't just win them, he, he dominated. He was quite small as a junior, and he's racing some big you know, athletes from China and Korea, and I honestly had no idea where we're gonna go. He's small, he doesn't produce a lot of power. He would fall through every crack in the system. He started off, he didn't have any money when he came to Australia. He only had enough to feed himself, he was like most, Malaysian athletes. Some had a little bit of English that they learnt yeah, at school. And uh, he was one that had very limited, but he's so intelligent, he, it didn't take him long to pick it up. I remember John and his wife, uh, Vicky Bisley, told me, you know, if you want to be an elite athlete, you have to change your lifestyle, your diet, and also you need to uh, be adaptable. For me, he's like a, not just like a coach, but he also like a father figure, you know. He helped in and outside of the sports. My Olympic journey started with Beijing 08. I was still very, very young, and I put a goal for me to be at the Olympic Games in 2012. But I was so surprised I made that early, you know. I was one of the smallest fat bearers during that Games. Going into 2011, the last of the World Cup events was in Manchester. Everything was going to plan. And then, you know, with about 100 metres to go, and there was a massive crash. John called me, you know, uh, Adizo, yeah. And I said, yeah, I said, are you OK? I said, uh, yeah, I'm OK. Do you want to continue the race? Do you want to, do you want to finish the race? And he goes, yeah, can you get me back up? I want to cross the line. I was in pain, in so much pain and I finished the race and I quickly stopped on the fence. I can see that something piercing through my calf. I feel like, oh, I'm dead this time, I'm dead, you know? I was like, oh, can I make the Olympic Games, you know? Can I, can I still ride the bike, you know? Am I going to lose my leg? The doctor, he told me that I was very lucky because the sprinter was in between of my tibia and fibula and very close to 
to hit the main artery. The splinter was something that we, we had to get over mentally, so that was the hardest thing. It just took forever in that lead into to London. We ended up um, you know, getting back into full training probably five months before, and it wasn't enough time to have him in the best shape of his career, both mentally and physically. I'm very, very, like, very disappointed that I cannot deliver something and I cannot achieve my goal. I went back to Malaysia. I don't see the waste footage for nearly three months, I can say. Post London, it, it was so disappointing for him to, to not get a medal at the Olympics. And we sort of sat down and we mapped out the next four years. You know, obviously we're after Malaysia's first you know, cycling medal ever at, at Olympic Games. It was really, really intense in the final because the race was restarted for two times. The plan is to be really patient. As is all executed really well, and you know, I was getting excited and, um, and then you know, I was getting tight. And I really didn't know that we won the bronze medal until it came up on the screen. And then it was the best feeling. Everything you've worked so hard for you know, the last 11 years. Cycling, uh, it was really small when I first started. I can say nowadays, the scenes just get so much bigger. People would, would never understand that we've come from a country that's got one velodrome and we win an Olympic medal. It's just captured the imagination of, of Malaysia. We have a good young guys coming up. I hope I can uh, mentor them as much as I can. And I hope I can uh, leave my legacy to them. Even though we are a small country, but I believe that there's a lot of future world champions that we can find there.